Hey, Joe here with my first record video. The last couple of months I've been watching uh, quite a few videos and enjoying them quite a bit. Uh, people uh, having videos on YouTube where they share the albums that they're listening to, the albums that they've been uh, collecting the, in the weeks or months, or their favorite albums. So I thought, why not give it a shot? And I'm gonna share with you a couple of things, a couple of albums that I purchased in the month of April, including Record Store Day and a little bit of an introduction on to who I am and what I'm about. First of all, I've been an avid uh, fan for over 50 years of music, uh, both live music, recorded music. I was a musician in my uh, youth. I was a part-time trumpet player playing in a Tejano band, had aspirations to be the next Miles Davis. Uh, I didn't quite pan out that way, but I've always enjoyed music and I got a love of music from my father who was also a part-time trumpet player and he introduced me into jazz music at a very early age and of course I branched out into rock music in the 60s, 70s and at one point in my uh, teenage years I started getting a pretty big collection of records always hitting the Tower Records in Southern California especially the one in Buena Park and eventually I had over a thousand albums but like many of us, uh, went digital, eventually got into CDs, eventually started uh, stream, uh, downloading MP3s. And uh, through the years, I got rid of my record collection, unfortunately. But the last couple of years, I could see the value of records once again, and I really missed it. So I started building up a collection about two years ago. And so here I am. So with that, I thought I'd share with you some of the albums that I got in the month of April and you can get an idea of the kind of music that I listen to. And it, it's pretty eclectic, uh, I must say, for uh, about the different kinds of music. Uh, lately, I've been mostly listening to jazz, but like I just shared with you, I enjoy rock, uh, jazz, blues, and even old school country. So anyways, here's a couple things. To begin the month, uh, I usually go to a parking lot flea market here in the town I'm here in South Texas, and I picked up a couple of really good items. Uh, the first up was uh, Taj Mahal. This was just called Satisfied and Tickled 2, Taj Mahal. And I've been a fan of Taj Mahal since way back in the 70s. Uh, one of my favorite albums of his is the one where he did with uh, several tuba players live at the Fillmore. And I've been keeping my eyes out for this one. And this one is also on Columbia and made in the 70s. is made a little bit after that. But the title song is by Mississippi John Hurt, Satisfied and Tickled Too. It gets a little bit into uh, R&B, maybe almost uh, borderline disco grooves. But overall, it's a it's a cool album, and it, you, Taj you can never go wrong with Taj Mahal. So I've always enjoy I enjoy picking this one up. Next up, this is a record that I had in my original collection, Hank Williams. It's called Twenty Four of Hank Williams' Greatest Hits, and what can you say about Hank Williams? He's the probably the most well known country singer of all time. Uh, my dad actually introduced me to uh, Hank Williams way back in the in the 60s. Uh, not directly Hank Williams, but he bought an album by Hank Williams Jr. where Hank Williams Jr. was singing the soundtrack of uh, My Cheatin' Heart, the movie made about Hank Williams' life. And I always enjoyed hearing Hank Jr.'s versions. And as I got a little bit older, I was able to pick up this album and I could hear the originals. And nobody does Hank Williams like Hank Williams himself. And this is a two a double album, and it's got all the great ones. Your Cheatin' Heart, Honky Tonk Blues, I'm So Lonesome, I Could Cry. And uh, I really enjoyed picking this one up. It's in great shape, and I picked it up for a couple bucks. So it's a classic, a must-have if you into uh, Americana or good country music. Hank Williams. Now a little bit about Record Store Day. Uh, this was my first record store day that I ever attended and uh, I went with it with some trepidation, not sure really what to expect, but my local record store here, they uh, actually put online, they said what in, what records would we be interested in 
the store purchasing because it's a rather small record store in this small town that I'm at here in the in the South Texas and actually it's called Valley Vinyls excellent record store uh, shout out to Victor and his family who run it but uh, so I put in my requests and um, luckily they got them and uh, a little bit about the experience I wasn't sure how long I should stand in line the store was gonna open at 12 and I've been there in years past, not so much to get any particular records, but just to uh, see what it's all about. I went on the Black Friday record store day, but this was my first record store day in April. And anyways, I arrived about two hours early and there was only about four people in line. So I thought, man, did they get canceled or what? But no, there was four, I was fourth in line and I had a good time uh, just uh, talking with a couple of people in line in front of me and in back of me. And uh, they were mostly rock fans. They were there to get the, the Queen album or the Crow. And they were kind of making fun of me, like, why are you here so early to get a jazz album? Nobody's gonna be interested in the jazz albums. But I sure was. So the albums that I requested and I was able to get there on Record Store Day were uh, two great albums. First off the bat is Charlie Parker with Strings, Alternate Takes. and. Uh, this is a beautiful album. It's on uh, colored vinyl, and I'm not really a, a, a big stickler for colored vinyl, but I'm a big stickler for Bird, Charlie Parker. And these are the alternate takes, and uh, what can you say about Bird? It's classic. This has probably been uh, one of the albums I've been listening to most since Record Store Day. I've played it already a couple times, and you can't go wrong with Bird. The other album that I requested and I was fortunate to get was Bill Evans, Evans in England. And I've been a big Bill Evans fan since the early 70s. Uh, once again, I think I saw Bill Evans on a PBS special way back in those days, on uh, back when I was living in Los Angeles. And I fell in love with his uh, melodic, uh, tender piano playing, and it's just so lyrical and just what can you say? I mean, uh, all across the board. Jazz fans always hold Bill Evans in a special place. And I was actually fortunate to see Bill at Concerts by the Sea, probably in the, somewhat before he died. It was almost his last trio, I believe. And uh, it was a double bill with Bill Evans' trio and Art Farmer. And uh, I just feel very fortunate and blessed that I was able to see Bill. But ever since I've been back in record collecting, I've been trying to build up my Bill Evans collection. And this is a beautiful album. It's a gatefold, uh, recorded uh, off some uh, bootleg tapes, but the quality is excellent. And uh, Bill is in fine form with the trio of Eddie Gomez and Marty Morale, which is actually one of my favorite trios. Of course, the classic trio is the uh, Live at the Village Vanguard with uh, uh, Scott LaFaro and Paul Motion. But I always enjoy the, the trio of Gomez and Morale also. And, uh, once again, this is another one that I've been listening to frequently. It's a double album, and it's got a lot of the great uh, Bill um, songs that Bill uh, made famous, including Waltz for Debbie, Two Lonely People, uh, Turn Out the Stars, and on and on. So glad I picked up uh, Bill Evans in England. I also dug into the bins on Record Store Day. And I picked up a classic that I, once again, had in my original collection, the Almond, Almond Brothers Band, Brothers and Sisters. And I've always loved this album. Of course, uh, most of you know the history behind the album on how uh, this was the first album after the death of Dwayne Allman and Barry Oakley. And it's, it's just, it's just uh, such an album that shines with energy and renewal. And it has one of my favorite songs of all time is Jessica. I love that song so much with the sparkling piano of uh, Chuck Levine, Chuck Levine and uh, Dickie Betts is wailing away on the guitar. In fact, I love Jessica so much, I actually named my firstborn daughter after uh, Jessica. So I was very glad to pick this up for a couple bucks in the crates there on uh, Record Store Day. Almond Brothers, brothers and sisters. Another one that I picked up in the crates, and I always enjoy finding things that I've never heard of, even though I know the artist. And this one is called Jive for Five by Bill Holman, Mal Lewis Quintet. Of course, Bill Holman 
is more known for his arranging skill than his tenor sax playing. And of course, Mal Lewis later went on to be part of the Thad Jones, Mal Lewis big band. But this is from the late 50s, and it finds them in a West Coast small group session with uh, Bill Holman, Mal Lewis, and Jimmy Rolls, and a guy named Lee Katzman on trumpet, who I'd never heard of, but very tasty, kind of in a Jack Sheldon mode. And one thing I really liked about this right away is the cover. I don't know if you can see that, but it's old school uh, cartoon drawing. It's got all the cats there holding their instruments because they're, they're supposed to be waiters serving up uh, jive for five. And this is a very well recorded album. It's on the Andex label, which is a private label. It's a mono and uh, it's a really great condition. And once again, I picked it up for three bucks and I've really been listening to this one quite a bit and enjoying it thoroughly. One of the cool things that I found out about the internet is sometimes there's contests. And uh, recently I uh, saw uh, something that um, on um, Instagram actually, and it was a contest. It was actually after I posted uh, Charlie Parker, actually it was a Dizzy Gillespie album. And uh, it gave me the opportunity to enter a contest to win this box set from uh, Craftswork uh, uh, records and it's a box set of jazz at Massey Hall and it's a three uh, it's their 10 inch records and it's the classic uh, concert at jazz at Massey Hall with Dizzy Gillespie, Charlie Parker, um, Bud Powell and Max Roach and Charles Mingus on bass and I actually surprised I just had to enter this contest and tag two other people and I Lo and behold, to my surprise, I actually won this. And it's it's a pretty nice set, and it's beautifully recorded, beautifully packaged. There's a, a nice booklet along with it. But most important is the music. And uh, for the year, I believe it's in 54, 53, and it's a beautiful recording. And uh, there's a whole story that goes behind it. And uh, there was a, a boxing match that night, and Bird was playing a... Um, plastic saxophone and uh, just a, a lot of stories that go behind it but there's very spirited renditions of small uh, salt peanuts perdido all the things you are uh, there's uh, also a trio a record with bud powell actually it's from a different date where he's just playing with the trio but it's at the same venue and uh anyways it's jazz at massey hall the debut uh, debut records the 10 lp collection and anyways i'm very fortunate that I was able to win this and um, can't say that I don't win anything. Also in April, it was actually my birthday and thanks to my daughter, I was able to win, uh, I win. I was uh, given a gift card from Amazon and I don't buy very many records on Amazon. Uh, usually if I'm buying online, I usually go to eBay or Discogs. But with the gift card, I thought, well, I'm going to purchase some albums. So one of the albums that I got was the classic Workin' with the Miles Davis Quintet. And of course, most of you, if you're jazz fans, you know all about this. And it's got uh, John Coltrane, Red Garland, uh, Paul Chambers, Philly Joe. And uh, this was a nice pickup on Amazon. And it's uh, from, it's the clear vinyl from Newberry Records. And uh, actually, I have a couple of albums that I've purchased that uh, Newberry put out, you know, their re-releases. And uh, even with the clear vinyl, who some people don't really get into it, uh, I've been really surprised with the quality. Very nice, clean pressings, no problems. And I couldn't be happier because uh, the chances that I get a nice uh, early pr uh, pressing of work in is probably pretty slim. So I was really happy and uh, to get this one for my birthday. The other album that I purchased on Amazon was the Art Pepper Quartet featuring Russ Freeman, Ben Tucker, and Gary Frommer. Uh, this is uh, from, I think it was originally released on Tampa Records, and it's a beautiful recording of art. Uh, my dad was a big Art Pepper fan, and uh, so am I. Uh, I was fortunate to see art a couple times at Dante's and at the Lighthouse back in Southern California in the day. And uh, this is a great album. I did receive it once. 
uh, I, the first one I got through Amazon was delivered and it was had a pretty bad warp on side one. So I repurchased it and because uh, I really wanted the album. And uh, this is also also a re-release. And um, of course, it's on Omnivore Recordings. And I, anyways, I re received the replacement in the mail and there's no issues with it at all. And I've just been digging on the sounds of Art and, and Russ Freeman. You can't go wrong with Art Pepper. So I guess I'll leave you with that. And I hope you enjoyed some of the things that I've shared with you and share with you again.